but listen, I want to thank you. Thank you, really, because I'm doing this, this this exclusive uh for my channel. We had this idea we want to do like you know this kind of thing, you're just kind of casual shit, and you were the first guy, uh -huh. you know. So thank you. Really, really I think that, I think it's great you're doing this, you know, because it's rare to see you talking with you know your buddies. Oh, uh, it's never been done. Yeah, I know. You know, <laughs> nobody's nobody else has been on a tour bus with us. Exactly. <laughs> well, except you know. You know. But, but the, the thing is, that, that what, what I think maybe a lot of people don't know is how far back we go. I know, yeah. They might think we started like, what is that, 2016? Yeah, with G3 or something. Oh, G3, of course. Sorry. Yeah. That was my, my uh, yeah, but you get even before then, we were. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 I can't remember the year that we first met, but it was, er, it was early 80s. 84, 84 yeah. Uh, and I think it was, was it, was it at the, um, it was at a concert that Alcatraz was playing. Is that right? I know we met at the, at the uh, Troubadour. I don't way know. back. <laughs> I don't know. That was my, before I joined Dave Roth's band. We met at the Troubadour. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. I, I, cause I, I met, I, I, I was hanging with Dave there a couple of times. Right. Right. Was right. that the time? And then I, Say what? I was hanging with Dave there a couple of times. Like I'm talking when the oh, thing that, was go, going down and he was in, in the band and it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He, that was definitely long. It's a little fuzzy back then, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because I think when we were doing what we were doing back then, we weren't thinking 30 years forward, you know? What is that, 40? No. <laughs> 40 years i think it was yeah like like 38 38 years yeah a long time i it's mean it's funny i got some photos of us back then too we were so young no <laughs> I, I have i have on my phone uh for for your uh number picture you and me i think from dam or something yeah yeah one of those yeah yeah that was great i remember because i was uh i told you this the whole story about when uh when you you had left Alcatraz, and yeah. then they were looking at somebody. What I remember is, I just heard about it, and I heard you were already gone, and I went down to audition. Right, right. And it was interesting because I I didn't play, you know, I didn't play like you, and I was expecting that they would want somebody, you know, that could really, real really sh shred because. I wasn't really that guy, but you know, I had a couple, couple of things going on. But I had done the audition, and I know that um, I go in there and I, I play, and the guys in the band are like, "No, that that you know, he's not he's not right, right?" So you know, I thought, okay, they got who they wanted, you know, they they found the right replacement for you know the the best that they could do, and. Uh, and then I got a call that I got the gig. And the, I, you know that story where I, the first show, I think it was in, um, oh, where the heck was it? Riverside, Riverside. And nobody knew, you know, the, the, the majority of the people there were there to see you. Oh. <laughs> and I'm walking out onto the stage and nobody knew that you weren't there. <laughs> I'm sure somebody must have known. So, Ingve, as far as I could tell, nobody knew because the entire audience was chanting your name oh as God. I'm walking to the stage. And I'm I'm completely unknown, you know. I'm just this weird guy that's not Ingve, you know. <laughs> I get up there and man, when I when I got up on the stage and looked out into the audience, all I saw was this. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was hilarious, but I got through it. But then right after that, you were you you started right away with that. No, what, what happened Ford. with me was that um, it was so fast because I, you know you know when I started in Sweden, I was I, I was I started playing when I was seven. I had my first guitar when I was five, five years old. <laughs> I had my first guitar, yeah. but I didn't play until I was seven, and by the time I was eight. I was playing, uh, you know, all this weird stuff. My, my, my brother used to go, hmm, <laughs> my older brother. So he went out and bought a good electric guitar, which I eventually kind of oh, yeah, yeah. got from him, you know? Yeah. 
So once I had an electric guitar and an amp, I said to one of my classmates, I'm not eight years old. I said, hey, we have, we have a gig on Friday. He's like, what are you talking about? You, you, you're playing drums. I, I don't play drums. It's okay. I show you how to play drums. Don't worry about it. I don't have a drum set. I have a drum set. My grandfather's a drummer. My brother said, so you got to play on Friday. And I said, okay. And I just showed him how to do, bah, do that. And I just rip over this. I was eight years old. And with feedback. Eight years like old. Eight. And what did school, you guys play? Just jammed, you know? I mean, I just okay. he just held down the beat. And I was just making a lot of noise. And uh, this was in the school where, where, where you have your lunch, you know? It was like a little stage. <laughs> so anyway, what I'm trying to say, the reason I said that was because that's, I started from the beginning like that. <clears throat> and by the time I was like 10, 11, uh, I was putting bands together with like 20 year olds, <laughs> you know, they, and, and then they had jobs and stuff. And now, I, now how, I, were, how were you playing at that age? Like if you were to kind of compare. Okay. So I was, by the time I was eight, when I was eight years old, I got uh black Morris, the, the, the fireball album. Right. You know, yeah, and also in Sweden, you got to remember in Sweden in the 1970s, there was one TV channel from six to 10. And it was usually about the farmers. You know, <laughs> you know? And, 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 uh, and uh, there was no radio, nothing, no video cassettes. You could yeah, go to movies right. and that was it, you know? That was it. So when, when you had a record, it was like your whole universe almost, you know? Yeah. I didn't hear anything else. I heard Clapton before. I loved him. I didn't even know it was Clapton because it was, I thought it was John Mayo. Yeah. Um, which I loved. I thought it was great. But when I heard that album, I learned all that stuff. And then about a year later, I got made in Japan. And I play, played all, note for note, everything from made in Japan. Child time and everything. When yeah. I was 10 years old. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. It's totally... But, well, you know, when you, when, you say, when you say that all that you had was records, yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah. Hard, I think that's hard for people to understand these days because most, most of the day... A lot of people are just staring into their phone, and and when all you have is something like a magazine that you get. I mean, we used to get. Well, we didn't even have magazines. I I remember the first time I saw a guitar player, I thought I found the Bible. <laughs> that was years later, like seventy six or something, you know. Yeah. But uh, but what I'm trying to say, so just asking about the level, I was I was, you know, for being that little kid, I was, you know, I used to blow people's minds, but they I they bet. thought it was very strange, obviously. But anyway, yeah. then I started ruling, ruling like, like the point I'm trying to make is I started like bossing everybody around and say like, hey, you're supposed to be here at 12 noon. Yeah, but I have a job. I don't give a shit. You're supposed to be at 12 noon and you're fired. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm 10 years old, right? You, you didn't know? even pay them and you fired no. them. <laughs> <laughs> and it was hilarious. So uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say is I did all that. And then, you know, 1982, I sent this cassette tape. Remember cassette tapes? Yeah, cassette tape to Guitar Player magazine, and that's how that, it all started. That's the, the Mike Varney thing. Yeah, which was me playing all the instruments, by the way, drums, bass. You, you I think you played me that tape. Yeah, I played everything. So anyway, what, the reason I'm doing this is how it worked out. So I had that kind of like mentality, solar mentality from the beginning, and then I got a ticket to go uh, to pl play with Steeler, which I played with like two weeks or something, and then I got offered to be in UFO and. Well, became Alcatraz the same day, and I started bossing people around then too. <laughs> I, I, I said to Alcatraz, "Yeah, I'll join your thing if you let me write the songs." You know. Uh. Anyways, so to make short, long story even longer, what happened was we went to Japan <laughs> in January '84. Yeah, I remember. As soon as we went there, the Japanese let me go. We want soul album. We want soul album. Oh, okay. So yeah. yeah. I oh, making, I, I remember now. Yeah. So that what happened was I started making that album. While I was still in Alcatraz. So I yeah. recorded the back, back basic tracks and then we went on the road and I would go home and do a solo. Then I would go back on the road and so on. And it was during this time, July, <clears throat> July 84, when it all came to head in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, uh, and you know, I left. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I just basically went home and finished that album, which was meant to be a Japanese release only. And yeah. then I started the second album, it was supposed to be the first one. So, Oh, so that ri rising force, that first record was only supposed to be a, a Japanese release. Yes, wow. and and it hit Billboard charts as an import record, but not on the import charts. 
it hit the billboard charts. Oh, my, oh wow. Kids would go wow. buy four, like, what was that, 30 bucks back in those days for Japanese yeah, press? Yeah. You know, the, and people would buy this album like crazy. And uh, uh, no one knew. And then when the label found out, they said, we got released in America. So both those albums came out at the same time, you know, marching out. Oh, that. I see. I yeah, see. Yeah, it was very strange. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, we did things very, very different back then. I mean, you could you could have a CD that's an import and still people would import it because they couldn't download it or, you know. No, it was it was all. I mean, I remember even when people when I was a little kid, you know, I remember how kids in school would say, hey, look, I got the new album, whatever. I don't know, the, the bands, the suite or whatever. They, they were really- Yeah, popular. yeah, yeah. You know, they were Appa. No, it was the suite and Alice Cooper was big in Sweden, you know. Oh, okay. I yeah. remember Kiss too. But yeah. uh, they would have, they would have gone to somebody's house and record their album and have a cassette. And I go, why would you do that? They don't have, you don't have the cover. Yeah, I you know, I always wanted the cover, you know. Yeah, you gotta have something to fetish. Exactly, you gotta have that thing, and so uh, I think that's the held true for the longest time. You know, like where yeah. people actually went out and bought the records. Yeah, yeah, they were buy. They, were, they didn't have copy. a choice. They, you can't, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't rip it or anything. Well, no, you couldn't make a cassette copy. Right, right. But I that was uh, that was a, that was a great period that we. Uh, I remember there's there's like a, a point where there's just a trajectory, you know what I mean? You, you All of a sudden, you're kind of in the limelight, and it's kind of like odd. Like, I remember for me, the first, the first real thing that happened for me was uh, I had made my first record, and it was just this bizarre... It was like I was going through um, some real changes, and I had no no thought that I'd be famous or anything like that. I just really wanted to play around with recording because I loved engineering and all this stuff. And I, I built this little studio and I, man, I must have been 23, you know, 22. Well, I was 22. And um, I just started to make this weird record on it. And there was one song on it called the Attitude Song. And that uh, made it to a floppy disk in guitar play. Oh, cool. You know, the, yeah. And yeah. that 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 had some 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 uh uh crazy guitar stuff on it and that was like for me the beginning of the you know the and then came that, the movie Crossroads and Was that after Zappa? Yeah. Yeah, Zappa I was 20. Well, 18 when I started working for him. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then 20 when I was uh But did I you guys him. go on the road a lot? Frank would Frank would tour twice a year, but he never he didn't do like us, you know, like China, you know, South a America. A lot of people didn't do that. You no. know, you I, never been Indonesia. Oh yeah, of course you have yeah. been in Indonesia. Sorry, we were there. Yeah, that yeah, we were I, there. I played some shows about thirty years ago. That was, um, I think that was before they got their stuff together too, as well. You yeah. know, a lot, a lot yeah. of uh, shady well, that stuff. That was that was. Yeah, those were early days for touring. I mean, when you go in the 80s or 90s, if you went to like South America, Eastern Europe, Indonesia, these these were just kind of like new, newly bringing people in. So they you had to get- play, I, I played a soccer stadium, headlining, in Surabaya, yeah. Solo City, and Jakarta, three shows. Wow. In 1990, soccer wow. stadiums. I'm talking insane amount of people. You know, yeah, and uh, they would have security it was an army section and a police section, but they don't like each other, so they started firing live guns, and, you know, at each other during the show and stuff. I thought it was fireworks, uh, yeah, and you saw people running around, it was crazy, yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. The, the, the one time that I was doing a gig where something like that happened, I was with Zappa, and we were playing in Palermo, Sicily in 1982. Uh, and it was the first time they ever had a rock band there, right? And it was a giant soccer stadium and it, it was packed and they had all the poli police, you know, the polizia yeah. on the perimeter of that. Yeah. And you weren't allowed on the on the field or near the stage. And this is this is all on film and we're playing and somebody threw, okay, I know somebody threw a rock and it, it, hit, a, it hit a cop, but it kind of bounced off, right? And and it bounced off and onto the stage. And there's actually footage of it of this 
stone hitting and then coming up on the stage and it's at my feet. Oh, wow. And wow. the cops, the police uh, broke out. They, they started a riot. They started tear gassing the audience. And we're playing and it's this giant outdoor, you know, soccer stadium. And you could see the tear gas kind of consuming the crowd and and everybody would be sitting down in one spot and then the tear gas would come and they'd just be running and 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 you know do you ever get tear gassed it, it's it's very no, it's not no, have, at all. I've never done that <laughs> because it came around and then it, it hit the stage and that that stuff is not fun man it, you know eyes it's burning and everything and frank, it, terrible. yeah and frank just now that <clears throat> now we're hearing the gunfire yeah and and once the once we got the smoke frank just said it's too dangerous to play right and we left we get we're backstage and you hear the gunshots going on and we had to wear bulletproof vests and to escape through like you know ducking through cars and stuff <laughs> you know and then and then we escaped and that was the last show of the tour and i got on a plane and went home and flew to new york to to uh uh, spend a couple of days with my folks and I woke up in the morning I come down I open the paper and it says three kids were were shot at the Zappa concert yeah. in Palermo yeah. Yeah. they they didn't die but they 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 were shot and that was the last show that Frank did for like three or four years that's but when I played in, in Indonesia that's uh see like we didn't have any gunfire on the stage we're going like cross like this but you know how the big huge shows have another little Sort of like scaffolding for the sound man and lighting guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a duck for bullets all the time. It's crazy, you know. That's and everybody crazy. gets sick and stuff. Yeah, but you, uh, you just toured, right? Yes, I did. We Who's went. Uh, we went out in um, November and December here in the states. Actually, during during this whole crazy, you know, uh, the whole lock with COVID, whatever you want to call it. I did some shows. I went to, we did a huge festival in Serbia. That was last year. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. And then that, that, that was interesting. But um, we played some, some, some sort of those live what's that, broadcast shows in Vegas. They were not so good. I mean, like that. Um, and then in the summer, no, in this, I can't remember. <laughs> I did some Florida and Texas dates because they're all open, you know? Yeah, yeah. We just did that, and then we did a whole thing, you know, and we're going back out now in May and June, uh -huh. uh, doing a huge American leg again. And um, I don't have the dates, exact dates, but it's a lot, a lot in California because I had a, we didn't do them last time. So yeah, yeah. So, like seven, but, seven shows in California. Right, right. So, uh, what was it like when you were out there, though? To... You know, the funny thing is that I, I said it to my guys too while we're out. I said. I, I didn't even know. I didn't even think about this uh, lockdown thing. The only place where it was kind of a little bit uh, was uh, New York, I think. You, you, yeah. you really sense a little bit there. Um, but it was it was really cool. But then my agents told me that um, uh, right after I my tour stopped, they started canceling stuff again. Yeah, I remember because when you went out. It was kind of like the, right the for Christmas. Right for Christmas, I finished like twenty second or something like this. Right, right, and and you you finished right when the when the spike for Omicron. yeah exactly. Yeah. They told me that they had a, they canceled the Dave Roth for one, one one thing. Right, right, and you know Jeremy, my drummer, he was out with Sebastian Bach, uh -huh. and uh -huh. he was telling me the 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 majority of America, you would think that everything was kind of fine. You yeah, know, exactly. You, you, yeah. Yeah. So, well, hopefully, I mean, I know I got, I, I had to move my uh, North American tour to the fall. Okay. Yeah. But now are you, uh, do are you, when's the next time you're going out? I'm going out May 5th, I think, or May 1st until about um, mid -July, June. And then I go to Europe in July. Oh, nice. In the UK and um, Holland. Oh, maybe I'll see you there. I'm going to I'm gonna be there in the uh, summer, too. Yeah, in J July, I'm there. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember the exact dates. We'll find out. Um, 
And then, you know, I, as, as, as we speak now, I, I kind of like, I always say, hey, go ahead and book, go ahead and book, go ahead and book, go, go ahead and book. We'll see, you know, what happens. Yeah, we'll see. Um, you know, but. Um, I'm looking forward, hopefully, not not next summer, but the summer after that to maybe get out back out on Generation X. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why don't we do it before then? Well, I think everybody's got, you know, same old kind of scheduling thing. Everybody has to catch up for the last year. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, everybody's out now. My, my agent was telling me that everybody that wanted to come out in 2020 pushed to 2021. Every, then 21 is pushed to 22. And then everybody that was planning on going out in 22. So it's it's a lot, lot of music out there right now. Thank God. Yeah, thank yeah. God, right? Yeah. Right. That, that that was pretty cool, the one we did with... Uh, how's Brian doing? Brian, yeah, right? That was great. Because I, I, I finally got that solo down now, then it wouldn't use me. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, anyway. That'll be on our DVD, though. Exactly. Yeah. That's so cool. What right kind of on. books do you use? I've got, you know, I've got these um, ultra, ultra heavy because i i just uh this jim dunlop jim dunlop del Reno, if you can see this yeah this i've used since for like 30 years or more they just yeah. put me out my my uh seem to series now on jim dunlop it's, it's so cool I and mean, they come in different colors coming red and white and black those are heavy 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 this right? is 1.5 wow but the reason the reason for that i think i i remember i told you that before it's like when you do a I don't know if you can hear this, but if you play like legato, yeah, like that, it's right here, yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's say you play legato. You want to play? Wait a minute, Ingve, back back up a little bit so I can see your picking hand. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. So so, but, but anyway, but basically, but what my whole point was with these picks is that you have two brain halves, and when this brain half makes this movement, yeah. This one has to do the movement in coordination. Right. If this pick bends. There's a slight delay in uh, the actual, you know, the note coming out. Yeah. So, so basically, if you want to pick like really like the, you know, I don't really do that. But if if you want to do that, like the exact, you have you have pick. to have a, a very stiff. yeah because otherwise you bend, like you know some people have these bending picks which is cool i guess but it, it doesn't work for me so don't let yeah, me yeah, no i get that it feels kind of feels like you're walking on paper or something when you have those yeah yeah it's like it's, in fix. yeah you know? yeah yeah and and you know what's so interesting i mean i've followed uh, your uh technique since since the day you hit the scene and w stunned us basically and then you know up to just our last tour when we were jamming inches away from each other you know yeah and i still i still watch what you do and i can't i, I just don't i can't figure out what you're doing you're knitting <laughs> but you know like you're 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 knitting. Hear something really funny yeah. i i played it like i told you i played guitar like a mad person 15 16 17 hours a day and fall asleep with guitar on me like we're getting up with the yeah. guitar when i was a little kid but the first time i even looked at my picking hand was in 1983, yeah. I think it was, when I was doing an interview with Japan, young guitar, they go, how do you hold your pick? And I looked down, I go, uh, like this? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I never thought about these things. I never thought about yeah. this alternate. And they, they, they have this whole thing about what I'm doing, sweet picking, but that's not sweet picking. That, that with our bedrooms. Because yeah. sweet picking, that, like that. Right. Right, but it's not. It's it's a. It's I don't even know what it is. But it's basically <laughs> what, what 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 I always was most concerned with. Like I told you before, like I record all the time in my my studio. I had when I was a little kid. I would listen to what it sounded like. And when I heard what I didn't like, I said, "No, I gotta make that better," you know. And I didn't think about how to do it. I just wanted how to do it. Right. I just you use well, it's kind of like you use your mind. No, you and your ear. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you just and you didn't have to think about 
what to do. It just happened. There wasn't your any ear instructional was... videos. There wasn't any nothing. Right. So, and it's not like when you take violin lessons, it's a 400 year old technique. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Pretty, that's 400 years settled. You know? Yeah. This what you we do, you're not going to be changing that. What we do with there's no such thing. Right. Because the guitar per se was meant to be played like this. Yeah. But, but the interesting point that you make that we, I know that, you know, we try to explain it is when you, when you were learning, when you were carving your, uh, your style, it wasn't so much a focus on what your fingers were doing, but it was your ears that was, you, you knew, cause you had told me that when you were young, you had a, you had a tape of violin players. Right, but and, but it was no. What it was was like back then, as I said before, um, there was one TV channel, maybe two, <laughs> and so when something was on, right. you saw it, you know. And I remember yeah, when I was like twelve it. or thirteen, I think it was twelve, and I heard it as soon as violinist solo, just just violin playing like this. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I and know. I took one of my boom boxes <laughs> and put in front of the TV like this to record audio. And at the end right, of the program, right. yeah, okay, yeah, that's it's Nicola Paganini's 24 Capricious. And I'm like, motherfucker. All that, all that stuff about the arpeggios. That that's you know, this is the Paganini's fifth Caprice, number five. That's in the yeah. 24. And I just decided like it was such a weird thing because why would one think like this, you know? But I yeah. said, Yeah, I want I want to do that, you know. On yeah, a guitar, yeah. which is impossible, you can't do that and until you just until you decided to do it. But I decided to give it my best, you know. So uh, yeah. that's basically where where I I got the whole idea. Of the, that's why I never really got into the humbucking pickups that much because they tend to have a little less definition. Right, right. You know, but when you, know, you were, these when you were... these are humbucking pickups, the Seymour Donkeys, but the humbucking... yeah, that stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but what I'm saying yeah. is that that type of um pick up windows, so to speak, they call it. Um, yeah. It, it gives you, but, but, you lose out a little bit too. You don't get as much harmonics like the Van Halen, cool Van Halen sound and stuff. You can't do that. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but it's got a sharp edge. And when you, when you uh, have these single coils or the stacked and you click to like the treble yeah, pickup, it's just yeah. good. Not like, a, not like a double coil. It, yeah. The single coil. Especially, especially with the, with the hundred watt Marshall. The, yeah. The, the 100 watt Marshall, not the 50 watt, believe it or not, that I used to use for years. Now, the 100 watt is like, I love it how because it's, the, the, the notes just cut through everything. Yeah. Not, it's not so much yeah. volume, it's, it's just the notes, the notes don't get lost high. no matter what you do with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember when I was, uh, when we were on tour, one day I went around to everybody's amplifier and I plugged my guitar in. Oh. Just, just to see what the, their rigs sound like with my playing, you know? Are you straight in? Just went into like like uh, your uh, Kenny would give me your input, Jack. Oh yeah, yeah, with with the pedal. Yeah, with everything through through the whole rig, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I yeah. went to Nuno and Tosin and Zach and me, and it's so it's so weird how every everybody is so the tone is so different, and I can't play really with uh, with the other tones. I mean, I can, but it's a whole different feel, whole different beast. Completely. It's, it's 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 almost like a physical thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. you know, because it's not only that the, the sound; it's how it responds, how the guitar responds. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, but is... but the one point <clears throat> that I think is so important that uh, we we were touching on was, and and I'm going to use your you as an example when you were young and you were developing that style your style you had a picture of something that you wanted which was the sound of that violin and you had no way of there was nobody teaching you how to do that so you had the picture in your head and and the fact that you didn't even realize how you were picking it your mind was was molding your fingers, your ears, your ears were mo they would, uh, and that's the point I try to tell people, you got to hear it in your head and it, it'll come out. Exactly. You know, and, and what I have found was really, really good was to record yourself, you know, a lot. 
because yes, yeah, when yeah, you yeah. play, it's to me, to me, the ultimate, the ultimate stage or state of mind is when you play the guitar, but you're actually listening to it. Yes, yes. You, 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 you're not. You separate yourself. Yeah. That that's and you're ultimate. actually like viewing. Yeah. You're viewing yourself. When yeah, you get, that's when what's the best. When you get that, that's like that. That's like when you. That's the ultimate, you know. Because just it to is. play something, I always found that you know playing a, a written part, it's 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 interesting and it's challenging sometimes, you know. But but it's like every night I go on stage, I, I know there's a whole lot of gray area there that yeah. has to be filled in. And it has to be at the spur of the moment and it has to be all inspired. It has to be all good. And that's a challenge. That's why I, I, I mean, otherwise I really wouldn't be, want to be doing this if I didn't have that challenge, you know, but, uh, yeah. but that, the ultimate is when you, especially with some holes, some holes, I don't use you any can listen effects. To back. I don't really use any effects on my guitar amps. amps. They're, right. they're not just a big fucking stack, you know, loud. That's it. And um, yeah. the hall, like last year, we, well, yeah, last year we played all these theaters. It was really, really nice. Most of them, some of the more ones we did with Janet Gen X, really good sound. And that's when it happens. But if you're, let's say, in a really tight little club, yeah, you just get pissed off. You, yeah, in a nice, oh, in a nice, it. yeah, in the nice uh, venue, you're hearing yourself off the back wall. Yeah, yeah. But I want to, I want to talk more about that. Sort of like the way the way you re, you can listen to yourself. Yeah, you know because that's not, a, what that's a lot not of, an on up switch, though. Really, that's that's got to happen on its own, almost. You know, no, you have to deliberately go there. You, yeah, you know what I mean. It, oh, and, no. and and what a lot of people uh, think about when they're playing is is what they're playing. You know, they're thinking about it, and they're but when you when you're able to actually become the listener of what you're playing, everything changes because you, 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 you get connected, that, right? That's when that, you really connect. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, that, yeah. That, is, that, is, that is like a, it doesn't happen all the time for me. It does, it, it's not like- Not for me either. You know, it's, 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 but when it does happen, it's something else. I mean, it's a fucking it's amazing something thing. Else, yeah. It really is. You know, it, does, it doesn't happen for me when I have shit on my mind, you yeah. know, like this, this sound sucks. Uh, you know, why is the bass play? You know, why is the band doing that? Or, you know, whatever it is, you yes. know, you just, you, you, you're out of sorts, you know, I can't do it then. No, exactly. Yeah, every, every, that's why I love to do like really, you know, extensive sound checks where, you know, I, yeah. I don't like surprises. For instance, I make sure the LD don't put any fucking white lights on me. Okay. I know <laughs> because if they do, that's all I think about, and the the, the playing, that's right? And the, the everything goes wayside, you know, and I don't like that. So I gotta make sure that all of those circumstances are perfect. So the only little, you know, and the, the feng shui with the marshals, they have to be, has to be yeah. everything has to be like that space you're gonna be on. Now. Okay, so be a thousand people, whatever it is, or more or less. It doesn't really matter. Could be it doesn't people. matter. No, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't it's matter. That, yeah. It's that place. That's where it's supposed to happen. And if it, you know, if, if one thing goes wrong, it's not so bad. But if there's more than one circumstance, that then it's I, hard. It's hard yeah. to keep the focus when yeah. when you're being distracted by something that is somebody else's uh, incompetence or 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 just the the, the the venue or something. You know. Right. But uh, that's what I work on now when I'm playing is allowing those things that are screwed up that you can't do anything about. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you were telling me the other day that you were doing a gig where the monitor desk was out at the front house. That's more than once has happened now. It's, That's I think crazy. It, I think they use the same console. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what they're doing. I, I really don't know what they're doing. And, um, or like if you're on a if you're on a festival date like you were saying, and it's your you're like the sixth band or you're headlining, and the whole stage has gone through multiple uh, monitor 
unplugging, plugging, you yeah. know, microphones and everything. Yeah. By the time, it doesn't matter how many sound checks you do. So, By the time you so. get on stage, something's going to be south, you know? It is. Yeah. That's, so what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do, because that, we can't avoid, that shit just happens, you know? I'm trying to find that listening zone in the face of chaos. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Yeah, when sure. when that stuff is there that distracts me, I'm trying to rise above it. Yeah, no, I mean that's I, I, of course I do that. Too. And you know, hard. <laughs> the thing is, I've gotten a lot better at that than yeah. say 25 years ago. Absolutely. Uh, that, but because then back then, you know, if I would one thing or even just one bad run or no, something. No, I know, I know. And, and that that I would let everything go shit. You know. No, I don't do that. I yeah. got tennis, tennis memory. It's like when, you, when tennis memory is like, never think about the point behind, never think about the point before. Yeah. So yeah, just move forward from the present moment. Exactly. You know, and it works. It works. It works. But, but, but like but said, sometimes with, you can't, you pissed off because you, you made sure at soundcheck, you made sure <laughs> this, 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 this is in fucking place. Yeah. And then some. <laughs> I don't know. It just, it, it, it's just part of it, I guess, you know. It's part of it. You, you know what? You try, you, we prepare the best we can. Exactly. You make sure that this, this, and this is the best it could be. And then you're just, you know, it's freewheeling, man. Yeah, you know, who knows what the fuck's going to happen. Exactly. But we get through it. We do. All right, my brother. Yeah, man, this was great. This was awesome. We should do it again. We should. So this is something you're just kicking off? This is the, you are number one. <laughs> the first this is exclusive for my my little channel so it's just i'm really happy about that you know just gonna be yeah i i think it's great you're doing this because like i was saying it's it's rare that you you've got a side to you that is so genuine and interesting and interested and informative and inspirational and you've you've have an opportunity to really show it in these in an intimate way because of all the people you're going to be talking to. And it's different than a journalist, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. this is way, way different. It's like we're yeah. brothers, you know? Yeah. And the people know, so. get to see this side of you and I think it's great. And I'm so happy cool. to be the first, the first guest. You right, are. So when are we going to tour? Come on, man. Let's get out there. Anytime again. you want, brother. <laughs> Actually, come out to California and Jim May, you can come up and play with me. If I'm, if I'm here, I leave for, uh, uh, Holland, I think, like on the twelfth. You know when you're gonna be? In May. Yeah. Uh, this later. Uh, any, yeah. All right, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Hey, all thank right, you bro. so much, thank brother. You. Thank you. God love you, man. You too. We'll see all you right. around. All right. God bless. See ya.